Uh, when I first came in, you know, I thought it would just be a typical workout session, but they really taught us basic drills. They taught us to go through the motions. They taught us uh, the fundamentals, really, of being able to effectively practice jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I've, I've been with friends to other places, and you just get jumped right in there, and like, people are crazy good, and it's like hard to learn. I thought it was gonna be like difficult because I'm like my size and I'm smaller. It wasn't really like an issue, so I still go like against guys that are my size or like bigger. But everyone here has been great. I felt like we're all in it um, as newbies, and I think uh, that helped as well. That definitely exceeded my expectations. Like mastering the basics, I feel like. been Josh I'm great you've been gone for a long time I have been you've I've been long, traveling the I was world on the road for five weeks you've been making a lot of friends I have a few enemies maybe yeah maybe. here and there you never well <laughs> I was trying to think of someone specifically yeah you know they're probably just pissed <laughs> off and didn't say anything to you I always wonder about that like who re who really hates you huh? yeah who really hates you because people can hate for no reason if you could get a list of people who hate you um just, somehow just to know yeah and they don't know that you know but just here's the top 10 people who hate you the most and there's some how some some magical way that this is, appears in front of you would you want it would you want to see that is it like annotated so i know exactly why like it's you, clear why you don't know why no you just get a top 10 list, number one being the most, number 10 being the least. These are the top 10 people in the world who hate you the most. No reason given. You're just going to get their name. That's nah, not worth it because they could hate you for like, they could hate you because they love you so much. You know, you ever love someone so much that you hate them because it's like you, maybe you love them so much, that you, but you can't have them. So you hate them. Jennifer Aniston. Something like that. <laughs> I could see how there might be a, a couple of weirdos out there that feel I always that way had about a me. I always had a crush on Jennifer Aniston like 10 years ago. Realistically, yeah. it's probably not someone you even know on your list of people who hate you. Quite possibly. Because like I get a lot of hate mail now ever since I, uh, since we, yeah, ever since we talked about the Purple Belt thing, oh, about how the, yeah. how the level changes over t the course of 50 to 70 years of, in sports. Do we need to hammer this, this topic I, I think again? we should explain it in more detail. I think people are confused. Well, the the confusion happened because one, media outlets are so desperate for clicks that they'll take any phrase out of context and use it as the headline of their article and then give their opinion on it yes. rather than actually present what was said. The point that I was trying to make, and I think Josh can agree with me on this, was that sports change over the years and techniques are developed. Just like if you look through any sort, there's a great video actually displaying um, Olympic. Uh, what is the, the sport called where it's, it's it's a gymnastics event where they're on the bar, the, the, the parallel bars, yep. the parallel bars, and they show it back from like 1910 all the way to now. And, and how, it's, how it's evolved. And, and how it's evolved. And like you can kind of see almost big jumps happen at a certain time. Like one guy uses a, a, a more advanced trick, and right. then the next year everyone's using the trick. And then it's like one guy takes it home with a gold medal with a new thing, right. and then everyone's using it next year. Well, think about this. Why, why is it that every year someone breaks a new world record? Yeah. Every year. It's so obvious. Someone breaks a world record. Why? Because we're evolving. We're evol People Te are getting stronger, faster. Technology. Smarter. Technology. Information. Is, su like supplements are becoming more advanced. Just, just the science behind athletics is becoming more advanced. Performance enhancing drugs are becoming more advanced. <laughs> this is a fact. This is true. This is a fact. All these, there's so many things that go into increasing performance. The athletic output. Yeah. Of just, athletes. and Just strength and conditioning research. I understand the importance of icons in a sport and what they represent, like Michael Jordan right. or Hickson or Helio, or the, which were the subject of Kobe. Conversation. Shout out to Kobe Bryant. Co Kobe Bryant. Rest in peace. Many, many sports have iconic figures, and I suppose it was callous of me to compare some iconic figures like that, but it's just so evident that sports evolve over time. 
And I think everyone is aware of that if they're presented with the information. But I think because I didn't explain it in that great of detail, maybe. Well, you did. You made a you made a secondary video explaining your your position, and right. And I thought it, it wasn't enough. It, it wasn't, wasn't enough for Henzo. Yeah, Henzo got upset with me. Henzo got upset. I didn't watch the video. <clears throat> I just, just read. Heard. I read the article. I didn't. I didn't watch. It was a podcast, and I basically basically what he did was just kind of point his finger and laugh at you that uh, I got submitted. That you got submitted at Europeans, and it, the first thing I thought of when I when I read that was he reminded me of uh, Nelson from the Simpsons the the bully car- the bully character who stands and laughs he points and just hey hey that's what i thought of i was like how petty is this like you yeah it's unfortunate like, all he did was point and laugh like you got submitted by a triangle mm-hmm. i can't remember the last time i got triangled but like what what was that like it was so weird it was just so unnecessary i don't, don't want to cause any more um issues with it i don't want to be in the next headline because no matter what I say, if I give some sort of retort, it's right. going to be in a head fi- headline. But let's just say everyone gets submitted. It's true. Everyone gets submitted, sometimes yeah. by people who've never trained Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu before. It's true. And by other arts. And it happens to everyone. Yeah. And I, that obviously has no relation to the topic. At it, was, it was so irrelevant. I just didn't understand what the point was. And like, I, I, like because I didn't listen to the podcast because I just didn't want to well, you know, yeah, I didn't put either. that in my brain. Um, but it, does, it just doesn't, it doesn't negate the point that you made that... Yeah, it's Jiu-jitsu not a personal. Jiu- it's not a personal point either. No, it's just the only relevant figures in the past in jujitsu are the Gracie family. They right. were the only ones bringing it to the to the public eye, and so in, if you're going to reference a athlete from the past, there's a very limited selection. I think it's oh. easy for people to take it personally because it's all within the Gracie clan. But whatever. well, and Hickson has always been he's always been known as the guy who is the the greatest ever, the yeah. greatest represent representative, the greatest representative of jujitsu in. Uh, like MMA combat sports yeah. like in the in the old day you know he was the guy he's the one that everyone said is the best so yeah maybe it would have been more accurate to compare it to MMA now versus then I mean MMA has ex- evolved so much as well I mean if you want to compare athletes the greatest of all times right if you want to compare it so Hickson was the greatest back in no, 20 years ago or whatever 30 25 well, years ago it was more than that. the 90s I think it was in the before, 90s no, I think uh, in the 90s it was mostly hoist competing so I think Hickson was a little before Two, that. Was he competing more? Two thousand. Let's look. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't well, matter. You, you keep talking. I'm about just saying. If we're going to compare someone who was considered the greatest ever from 20 years ago to the whoever is the greatest now, who's the greatest now? In jiu-jitsu or MMA? I guess jiu-jitsu in MMA. Damian Mayo. Both. Uh, wait, no. Like in their respective sports or all together? I don't know. I don't even know. I'm just saying. Yeah, things change over time. Are you? Are is is it just? Are you just? Ne- are we never allowed to compare? We are. The, like, the issue is that, like, there's so much traditionalism in jiu-jitsu, much more so than other sports, because it's tied to a family, so heavily to a family, that it's, like, difficult to make accurate comparisons and treat it like a, a normal sport because it's, like, you're going to offend some family member because they're the only ones who brought it in, into the market. So how are we supposed to provide commentary without getting some sort of backlash? There is a large following of people who really heavily idolize the Gracies, and that's fine. And that's great, but... I'm still going to comment on it and give my opinion. I just didn't understand the point that, that Henzo was making. Like, yo, you got triangled. But that doesn't negate the point Also, but that's us responding to a headline because we didn't listen to the podcast. Well, it I, may have I read the article and I read the quotes. Yeah, but um, that's not in context. Well, I trained at Henzo's after I had said that. I went there. I don't remember if I saw him, but he um, let me train there, so it's all good. Have you been banned from Henzo's? I don't know. Since Gordon, I since Gordon got upset with you? Yeah, everyone's mad at me, man. That's because you're making moves. That's what happens when you build success. Yeah, that's why I'm not like, like I'm doing I'm doing shit, and a lot of people. That's the thing. A lot you're, of people aren't. You're building a successful thing, and it's upsetting people. They're but like, I, I think it's because they don't really see the overall scope of what I'm doing. They just see that I'm doing things, and maybe don't really understand what I'm doing. Like you understand, because we have conversations behind the scenes of yeah. what I'm actually working on, and it's pretty big. I'm working on big things beyond just training and competition, which is a big thing in itself. You got training for competition is tough, but yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't even know, bro. The, the point stands. Jiu-Jitsu is evolving. You know why Jiu-Jitsu is evolving? Because we learn a technique. See you, Mark. We learn a technique, okay? Like, let's say the stack pass, for example. Mm-hmm. I used to always try to grab the collar up high by the neck, you know, really up, way up as close to the neck as possible because I thought I can get the most pull and try to stack. Mm-hmm. And then what happened? People start defending by pushing on the elbow, mm-hmm. right? So when you reach off high, the elbow gets exposed. It's very easy to push the elbow up. So now you're tucking that elbow, right? Well, I grab a lot lower on the lapel now. 
because people learn how to defend it. They push the elbow up, they drop their knee in, right? And they start, they start messing it up. Well, we had to evolve. So I slide the hand down, I grab the collar lower by the belt so that way I can pinch my elbow tight to the hip. Yeah. That's, that's the evolution, right? And that's, that's what happens. You learn a technique, someone learns how to defend it, and then you learn how to evolve around the defense. Yeah, I think a, a lot of the reason too. How that, can how can anyone say that jujitsu is not better now I mean, than it was twenty five years go ago? Go watch the blue belt and purple belt and brown belt divisions at Europeans this year. Right, it was like almost thirty to forty percent lapel guard players. It was pretty crazy. Everyone was playing lapel guard. Yeah, and you can see like a really good example if you're cur- curious to see how much lapel guard is in competition now. There's a uh, Instagram page. It's called Lapel Guard Players, I think, on Instagram. And he does a really good job of finding all of the lapel guard highlights of what people using it. And I think that's part of it too, is like systems getting introduced, my system, Dan or her system, the systems get introduced that disrupt things and people like what's more scary than knowing that everything you knew has changed can be beaten by and some, now you some need stupid lapel some stupid, yeah, some <laughs> stupid move that you have to learn now to stay relevant in the competitive scene. Cause like what, if you don't acknowledge it, it's dangerous. Right. It's Whether functional. you like it or not, you have to acknowledge you have it. To, yeah. You have to acknowledge right. it. And that's upsetting for a lot of people. Right. And I think that sort of contribution coupled with like my, my verbose opinions maybe can be abrasive to people because times are changing. And if you don't adapt, you're you gonna think get it's just behind. the word. You think it's just the wordage that you used. You think it's just the fact that you said purple belt. Is yeah. that what upset them? Ego. If we could have said it differently, people's egos. They don't want to associate that. But like, yeah, there's like we could have said it on a more gradual spectrum. But I get. I tried to put it in in words. Like, I, first of all, my reference of what a purple belt is is much different because I'm comparing yeah. purple belts like at autos. You know, right? I was training at, with at autos when Jonatus Ronaldo. Right. They were all purple belts that we're, were beating. <laughs> us yeah people like belts the, who beat up black belts yeah who beat up black belts like right. that that's also a huge point is like the the how quickly people advance in their techniques now happens at a much faster rate due to the internet right like you can be you can start jujitsu and pick up a massive amount of knowledge in a very short amount of time because all the information is packaged up in a nice little, little yeah it's, just a little down, it's like a little download package yeah mm-hmm. it's the, the the upload to your brain is so much faster the actual connection the the speed at which you can absorb information or the information is presented is so much faster because it's not um, transferred through an instructor that you see a couple times a week that teaches you, you know, verbally. You can actually just go online and absorb countless, countless techniques. It, it's really the only limiting factor is how quickly you can learn. And if you pay attention to humans, they can learn very quickly. Especially if you take some alpha brain. I've never tried that stuff. I would oh, like to. Is I it like good? it. Yeah, I like Miha it. swears by it too. I take it right before I teach a seminar and I just, I'm on point, man. Dang. Like when I learned all those names. Did you see that video? I learned 70 names. You did that on Alpha Brain? I took some Alpha Brain that morning, yeah. Damn. I also took some Lion's Mane. What's more powerful? Wait, what is that? Lion's Mane? It's just another supplement. But is mushroom, it made of mush- real lion? Mushroom. It's a Lion oh. Mane's mushroom. It's a mushroom supplement. Because I don't like eating mushrooms. I don't like the taste of mushrooms. I think they're disgusting. Uh-huh. It's the one food I hate in this world. Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Anyways. All my types of mushrooms? So I was doing the Nogi Summit at um, in Melbourne, and I learned 70 names in three hours. That's impressive. I wasn't teaching that day. So you, I just but walked. was it a short-term memory thing? Like if you went back, do you think you would remember all their names? I still? think I'd remember half. Yeah. I think like that's the thing about jujitsu as well is like you can learn the techniques, but if you don't keep using them, you're going to get worse. At them. Yeah. That's why it's so hard to stay super sharp for like competition because you have to really make sure your timing is on. You're running through all your techniques at like constantly in training, being sharp with them, and human brain is flexible. Uh, so I, the reason is my the reason I did that is because my memory is garbage. Mm. My memory is absolute garbage. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna t- I'm gonna challenge myself. I'm gonna try to learn all these names. And then everyone started betting me that I couldn't do it. And I said they they gave me three days to do it. I said I'll do it in three hours. I walked around in circles and just just repeated it over and over and over and over and over. Um, anyways, and then and I you did, still managed to teach an effective seminar. Well, well my, my segment of the seminar was the next day. So, oh yes, I did teach a very good seminar the next day. Um, and then I did that at like half the seminars. Some of them I was just too tired after the travel. I was exhausted. I couldn't do it, but I did, I did about 15 seminars in Australia, New Zealand. And I think I, I learned the names of everyone at half of them. I want flow. Let me log in. I'm trying to see. Their- oh, they banned you. You didn't know. <laughs> Did they? they banned you for life. You're done. Yeah. That wouldn't surprise me. They said they're tired of your shit talk and then you're done. Speaking, I have some shit talk for Flo. 
I have some shit oh, talk for them right now. Oh, shit. Because there's one, one thing I don't like to do is attack individuals, but I love attacking the institutions car, and ideas. It's my favorite. <laughs> okay. Because they don't fight back. <laughs> <laughs> Except the fact that you're banned. <laughs> I'm not have, banned. Have you noticed that you can't log into your account? Yeah, what the heck's going on? Is this a joke? <laughs> That's them fighting back. You're joking. <laughs> I, I work with Flo. We're buddies. But no, I do I just, have some constructive criticism for their, their uh, department of articles you used to write for Wait, flow okay so it's so funny because i was just um, i can't find i can't freaking log in i was just talking to them about the article that they had written about uh the autos aoj split okay and they had written uh, that maybe autos will never win the world title again after the split and wow the word never seemed to be a little unnecessary like yeah, yeah. that's that's a pretty big statement like you're never going to win again like what do you mean never Actually, they changed the article. I believe someone messaged them, and and said, "What the? What are you doing?" Probably Andre. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> like, but they were uh, like, what, me? They were like, "Why would you say never? That's ridiculous." Like maybe not this year, sure. Maybe not next year, maybe. Who knows? Yeah. But to say never, that's just absurd. I've, I tried to have a talk with them a little bit about journalism last time. I, I think I was speaking with um, a few of the guys over there at the fight or the who's number one event yeah and i think it's really important for these new, these outlets these platforms because flow flow grappling is more of a platform than anything i wouldn't call them a news outlet like a platform is different than a news outlet like a news outlet needs like has some sort of journalistic um fundamentals of like providing accurate information right like at least that's what news is supposed to be it's not supposed to be an opinion necessarily it's supposed to be facts right or if it can if it's an opinion they should state it as an opinion say like this is my opinion but right. That's what I always do. Whenever I write anything, I say, in my opinion, and then it, t- it takes away everyone's ability to argue with you. Like, yeah. I mean, they can argue with their opinion, but I'm gonna they can, read they, you. I'm gonna they read can you disagree one. with you. But if you at least state, look, this is my opinion, and then blah, 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 blah. And then no matter what anyone says, you can be like, okay, great. That's cool. That This is still my opinion. I think they may have taken this down, but I saw this on, on Reddit. So before you do that, okay. I just want I just want to remind everyone that Autos was always the majority point gainer at the tournament. Like, do you have the, do you have the numbers? I, well, I do actually. Sadly, I do. Um, but I don't have them in front of me. But basically, uh, AOJ was contributing about a quarter of the points, twenty five percent, thirty percent at every single tournament. They would contribute about twenty five percent of the points. Mm-hmm. So to say that because we split and we lose that twenty five percent off the bat right now this year, like that we're never going to win the world title ever again. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's true. And uh, it'll take us it'll take a year. It'll take a year. I mean, it, it's two t- years. It's maybe a, it's a hit. And like we were talking about bottlenecks earlier, like how many more competitors can people fit into a gym? You know, and uh, Autos doesn't really have another like. The, how's Actually, Autos we, Brazil doing? We, we bought the next building over. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you got to spread out eventually. <laughs> yeah, we just ex- expanded the HQ to the next building. Cool. Um, but what but, we said, what like we what like. A lot of Autos's former contributors to the points were their black belt squad, like Ari Farias. Farias? Farias? Ari Farias. Ari Farias. Farias. What's, um, what's your question? Claudio, Calasans, all the Ramon, Ramon Limos team from Brazil. Yeah. That was a big part of like their points in the past because uh, they were all repping so hard at black belt, right? Right. But I guess now now it's like Ronaldo. I mean, if Dantes. we get if we get Guto's squad from... Uh, Porto Alegre to come up like he has a monster squad. It's just it's just difficult for them to come up every year. If they all come up from south of Brazil, how how long was Alliance? Alliance was like ten, world team ten team years. Team. Man. How, how long has Autos been? Well, we won it two years in a row. Two years in but a row. Th- the last one we didn't win, so we're they, those are Alli- big shoes to fill. Alliance got the title back. Oh, so it's two. Yeah, dude, I'm so pissed off that I can't log in right now. Do you want to try to log in? You yeah. you talk. I'll log in. Um. They don't hate me. They didn't ban me. Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think too many people really care about the team title. As far, I guess it's important. I don't know. I just never really thought it was that important. But I can see how okay. it represents. I like just a, op- I just opened Flow, and the first thing I see is black belt competes in full body orange spandex, and it's little. I've always wanted to do that. He's wearing a gimp suit, but it's orange. You guys, you guys are getting the reference when I say the gimp, right? It's a Pulp Fiction reference. Everyone knows what a gimp suit is. It's a, the gimp was a character in Pulp Fiction, right? But it's also a gimp is just a gimp, and a gimp suit is what gimps wear. What is a gimp? It's like a like a pervy fetish, right? Chance, you know about pervy fetishes. What's 
I think a gimp. Oh, really? <laughs> I think a gimp is a derogatory term. Actually, I don't know. Who but knows? I'm gonna look it up right now. I don't want. I'm, I'm gonna look it up right now, people, because I don't want to get a hundred messages. Let me. Uh, okay, so oh. let me read you the title, or let me read you this ex- excerpt from okay. this article. Okay, go. Um, this is about Keenan Cornelius and Nicholas Marigali. This was on Flow Grappling. Keenan and Nicholas are no doubt two of the best in the game, but they're both coming off back-to-back losses. They had one of the best matches of the year at Worlds in the Open class, and there was supposed to be a rematch, but Keenan pulled out due to an injury. Um, I'm not going to lie. I don't even think it was one of the best matches in the world. This is a match that the fans want. The last one was intense, and both guys need a win at this point in their career. Ooh. <laughs> you need a win, bro. Right. So they said at both point, point. <laughs> Both guys need a win at this point in their career. That kind of like frames it like if if I were to not win, your career is over. My career is like done. it's going down. The Everything drain. you've achieved worthless. It's going down the drain. And so this this isn't why it's important. Like I would I don't care what people say about me on the internet. I know like I could probably like I could probably lose every match for the rest of the year and still be fine from like a like a sort of like a career standpoint. I guess like nothing's gonna go down the drain. You know. Like, people are still going to want to learn jiu-jitsu from you. Right. Like, I could just lose. It's true. Like, every match in a row, and it would still be fine. And that's what the beauty of jiu-jitsu. And why this kind of talk and this kind of, like, misinformation articles that are just designed to, like, stir shit up and cause drama and create, like, intrigue into something. Like, someone who doesn't know jiu-jitsu sees that and is like, oh, shit, if Keenan loses or Nicholas loses again, things are going to be bad for them. Like, what? Oh, no. You know? Right. It makes them start to, like, doubt people, doubt things in jiu-jitsu. And... We talked about this before on the podcast, how great it is and what an awesome sport jiu-jitsu is because it naturally developed to a point that no one gives a fuck if you lose. No one cares. Right. Because lo- everybody loses. Because it's impossible to win. Like, oh. it's every time. It's impossible to win every time. Yeah. There's not a single person in jiu-jitsu who is undefeated. Go right. look on BJJ Heroes. All Like, the top 20 guys, if you go look, they all have losses, like 30 or more losses. Right. Like you just lose in jiu-jitsu. The right. sport is too hard. It's too complex to be the best at un- undeniably. Right. Like Leandro losing to a bunch of people last year. Yeah. Um, Bushesha can, everyone, like, every, everyone, everyone has, losses. everyone has losses. So why, why is Flo trying to like change that through, through tr- the like pr- make it, trying to make it seem like some sort of unstable platform. Right. You know, I think if the jiu-jitsu community was more, um, I guess forgiving when it comes to uh, competitors losing, if they weren't so fucking harsh and brutal about it with the shit talk, I think more competitors would compete more. Right. But so if, here's the other, this is the problem with like people who are negative like that, who have a negative view of the world, who put it on social media and talk shit online. Everyone who is non-negative is not saying these things, but they are still observing it, and so then it influences the community to think that that is the the majority. That's the standard. But it's a it's a that's the the silent majority of jujitsu. The people who aren't talking shit are just normal people who don't care. Right. They don't care, and they're just not going to spend their time talking shit on right. Instagram. So they got better shit to but do. But what they will do is scroll through Instagram, peep at the comments, and then go on about their day. And they're going to be like, "Wow, that's like that's a lot of shit talking about this thing." I I didn't know the general community felt this way towards right. something so it's like influencing th- things in a negative way and can alter people's perspective and i think it's very important to protect those people who are silent on instagram and not like like if you look at your instagram comments you go if you go and look what you reply to it's very rare that me or you reply to the positive comments it's like we're like scroll through it's like someone said someone neg- something right. negative something negative i'm going to stick it to that you guy fire back at them right and so it's like it's this s- cycle of like negativity causing a response which gets more negativity, which causes more response. Yeah. And it's like a way to get negative attention. And so like, and then the platforms that like B- Jiu-Jitsu Time, or not, Jiu-Jitsu Times is actually pretty good about doing just the news and not using clickbait, but BJJ E, Eastern Europe, mm. um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, the Facebook page, um, it, the ADCC page is pretty good about not doing yeah. stuff like that. But the, a lot of the, and Flow Grappling, a lot of them like to just pick these sensationalized titles and like present them in a negative light to cause that controversy and cause that like back and forth of like toxicity versus like what's actually happening. Because if everyone was just like, oh yeah, this was all great. No one's going to comment. They're just going to leave their little emoji, right, right. <laughs> like thumbs up. Like, cause people who are like happy and like feeling good about the situation, they're not going to go and write some like long thing being like, wow, you know, even though Keenan 
lost. I thought it was really cool that he did this and this and this. Right, maybe, right. maybe how some people well, feel. And if they do, a lot of times the other people will, will call them nut swingers, right? Yeah. Like, oh, why well, get off his balls, bro? Why are you on his balls? Yeah. So it's like there's a the it's internet like, you know culture what? is just so such shit. It's toxic. I hate it. It's toxic as fuck. I'm so over and all all the people. Who it's so it. funny you said that you brought this up too because when I was in New Zealand, bro, I disconnected. You know, I had about, I've been doing it more too. I had ten days of disconnection while I was hiking through the mountains and like I. Who, wa- who wants to go on a platform where it's like you're just bombarded with ads? Bro, I came and back then bombarded with people's negativity, and the only positivity you can get is from the people you follow. Like comments should just not be allowed. They shouldn't be allowed. Like why does why do these negative people get to use our platforms? To propagate their I shitty just, ideas. I just block everyone. Anyone who says anything that is just like shit hitty, I just block them immediately. Okay, so <laughs> though, like you can do that to these commenters, right? Like right. you can make sure that they don't get to keep saying negative things. But right. when the when the news outlets start doing it, Flow Grappling, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu what, on Facebook, the people the? who caused the shit between me and Henzo, the people who ca- caused shit in the past about the Purple Belt thing, anything. Like I've been through a lot of things like this. People forget about them anyways. Right. Like literally since I've been a black belt, there's been issues it's happened multiple times yeah it happens all the time and i can't even remember the last one because right the new one knocks it out of the way right. but it's like why can we just like because this is how the internet works it's like traffic equals money so if right. you, what whatever it takes to generate traffic to your platform generates money whether it's through ad revenue or through like paid stuff well actually through more paid stuff it's like you want to present it in a more positive light but the the traffic itself where it's just free traffic and so you're trying to bring it in with negative energy is why people view flow grappling in a negative light because it's like, damn, why are you guys doing that? Like, what is this? Like, why are you pushing negativity to make money? That's like you're that, that breeds the vibe of your right. company to- toxic environment. It bre- it's like, you don't, you should not, you shouldn't ha- have writers writing that stuff. It, it's going to p- cause a negative public opinion and maybe it'll result in you making money. But then long term, it just creates the, it. You're built upon a, a bed of lies. Your foundation is built upon a bed of lies, and that's not uh, I'm, good for. Anyone. I'm just like my my mind is kind of spinning right now because there's so many different ways I can run with this this topic, you know. But like, it is important to let people express themselves freely, right? Yeah. Um, but you did make a good point that probably the negative comments are more prevailing than the positive comments. So the question is, why don't people leave more positive comments? I think that people are just busy. If they're if you're if you're like not really that caught up, so think about this: people who use the internet heavily. I've been this person. Like I've, I've been through years of my life where I don't socialize that much and I just am on the internet. You get bored and you're looking for interaction. And some people don't know how to articulate a thought in a way that is a, a cohesive and understandable thought that contributes to the conversation. But you know what everyone can do? Talk shit. Talk shit. Yeah. And, and then everyone thinks that someone who's talk shit is funny, right? Like, oh, I can't believe he said that. He's a savage. You're a savage, bro. Oh, I can't. You're so funny. I can't there, believe you said that. There's like some probably some deep psychological analysis and how this works on the internet. And I, got, I think my, my little sister was telling me how she took a course about this. And like they're teaching this stuff in college now, like I'm internet sure. literacy. Social media psychology. Yeah. Like what causes these actions but it's one of those things if you don't know about it you don't think about it you might just think that's how it is okay i got a question for you and i'm trying to articulate this in a way that makes sense do you think not i'm not talking about the representation of the jiu-jitsu community on social media Mm -hmm. i'm talking about the entire jiu-jitsu community if you could take a poll a public poll of the entire community of everyone who does jiu-jitsu and ask them what they prefer to read do they prefer to read stories about uh like ju- superstar jiu-jitsu athletes failing and just like crum- like they're cr- just crumbling like they're like all these bad things are happening to them and, and like do, do they prefer to watch someone crash and burn or do they prefer to watch someone rock it up and like succeed in just a massive awesome ways you know what do you think what they would prefer to read if they had to choose one or the other a or b you want to read an article about someone crashing and burning who was on the top or an article about someone who like defied the odds and like came from nothing and just achieved all these really awesome things. What do you think? I think most people would lean towards the positivity. I think the general com- community wants to experience positivity in their lives. And like, but just as, but negativity is a spectacle. It's like a car crash. Like if you see a car crash on the side of the road, you gotta traffic, look. traffic literally you gotta will look. stop. Yeah. And then you get to the front of the, end of the traffic and you're like, why did everyone stop to see this like tragedy? Well, you got, you, 
it's like human nature to like try and figure out what went wrong, I guess. It's like, what happened there? Like, how did this horrible thing happen? And I think most people view these negative articles and these negative comments as almost like a car crash. It's just like, this yeah. is a mess. Well, then, then you have people like Gordon who win constantly. He's like an incredible fighter. No one even wants to fight him anymore. Nogi, but it's, he's also a car crash, <laughs> you know, yeah. like it, like the entire, like he's winning. So he has, he kind of has the best of both worlds as far as like polarizing an audience. Cause he can, people who just want to see someone's success and appreciate their talent and skill kind of get that from Gordon. Cause he's winning everything and no one wants like at this point he'll just win forever. Cause none of the good guys even want to risk fighting him mm. because it's not worth it to them. They would rat like, it's risky. If you fight Gordon, there's a very good chance you're going to lose. But then also on the other side, anyone that he beats, he also will like, you know, create a shit storm about it and create this, the car crash spectacle. Yeah, yeah. So you get a little bit of both. Well, why do people like car crashes? I think, I think it's like a learning thing. It's like they, they, they observe it cause it's rare. Well, that's, like, what I was, yeah, so, yeah, that's what I was going to say. You don't yeah. see them every day. Yeah. It's, it's rare. Like ne negative things actually occurring in real life are rare. Just like, you know, news doing this, the news outlets do the same thing. They pick a negative topic and then they fear monger it until everyone thinks it's like some awful thing. And then if you actually walk outside, you're like, wait, not, the it's world, not that bad. The world's actually okay. Like things are actually okay. Why right. is the media portraying it in a different way? Well, it's because it's hard. It seems like it's hardwired into our brains to kind of like observe the car crash, observe the tragedy, and be like, "Damn, that's crazy. That should be. That's so rare." But it's like on social media sometimes it's like everything's a car crash, and it's like how often, like how how for well, how I'm long is that sustainable? You, when I got back from New Zealand and I got back onto the the outlets and everything, I just all I saw was shit just vomit and hate and negativity and just trash talk. And I was just like, whoa, I got removed from it for a week and well, I came back and I was like, what the fuck? Well, then is the other this? thing that's crazy about it too, is it's, it's all like I, social media is a different type of reality because a lot of those negative comments are people that in real life might be positive, but they think it's funny. Right. I think it's funny to talk like right. create, instigate things. Well, the, and they're hidden behind of uh, this. These are the this trolls. Wall. Yeah. These, they're these behind the, the trolls. Curtain. Yeah. The trolls. Like they're, they're probably generally not, terrible people but they just want to be funny right they're trying to generate laughs or yeah. i don't know maybe that's that's the only chance they have to get attention is to leave a funny comment right because otherwise no one gives a fuck about them right that's their only chance to get attention is to leave shitty comments that yeah, are funny. I'm, i marvel at the it like the internet came about so fast that i don't, I don't, understand I don't think anyone was ready for yeah. what it actually is created I, i'm baffled constantly when i read through comments i'm just like who the fuck are these people and like why do you guys have so much hate in your heart but then but it's like then we're hardwired to only focus on the tragedy even us who are talking her like saying that it's such a bad thing even we focus on it it's like we're yeah, focusing on it right now i know and you can't avoid it and it's like this, it's like the the internet is fueled by it almost because it's what creates the conf, the conversation because the positive things that are happening, you're just like, good shit, keep it up. Yeah. And then that's it. <laughs> so like there's right. no further discussion. And if you think about it, if you go look at all the comments on your, your posts, like most of them are positive. 99% of them are right. positive. And I just want to thank you guys that leave yes. nice comments. And it's up to us to focus, to ignore the negativity on its social right. media. But that's bringing it back, bringing it back. Like the news outlets should not have that fuel their platform, especially when you're doing it intentionally to cause controversy and cause some sort of back and forth just for traffic. So the, that's not good. so the rebuttal is why does the public choose to click on the negative stuff as opposed to the positive stuff? The car crash, bro. It's the car crash. So we can, but we can, we can blame the community, right? Because they're the no, ones. No, because the ones, we'll do the same thing. They're the ones clicking. You'll watch it. You'll look at a car crash too. It's like, it's, there's no avoiding giving it's just human feeling. nature, it's human nature. And that's the flaw of human nature, isn't it? Like we can't, if everyone could just be positive all the time and ignore the negativity and just work to eliminate it, we would be a utopia. Utopia. I mean, but over like society and civilization advances at a, at a, at a pace that is pretty good. It can like, as far as death and disease, famine, we're doing great as an overall world. The world is safer now the world than, it ever, much, than it ever has ever been. Ever before. Yeah. It's ever before. There's less war in the world than ever before. Right. So we're moving forward. And I think in a way it's almost good that people focus so heavily on negativity because it's like it brings attention to the shitty things and we try and eliminate them later. Trying to eliminate the things like, you know, nuclear war is like a horrible thing to think about, but it was sensationalized during the Cold War era as well. It's like this horrible thing could happen it's going to happen. Everyone prepare, everyone prepare. And then that, that kind of like uh, sets us up to like not let it happen too. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I got a question. Yeah, okay. Uh, similar to that. Um, what do you think about the kids doing uh, active shooter drills in the schools? 
You see that when they, they, they bloody themselves up, they act, they, you know, they, they, they act like this. <laughs> you haven't seen that. Yeah. yeah. They, they do these drills where like they, some of the students will volunteer to get all painted up and, and the, the body art and they, they act like they're dead. And then the other students have to like, they have to do active shooter drills. Well, a guy just walked in here today. I'm doing a CPR course for my staff. And he was like, oh yeah, I'm also going to include a, uh, blood stopping thing. What was it? What did he call it? I don't know. It oh, basically well. like, like apparently since the, the shootings now part of CPR training is like stopping blood. Like someone bleeding yeah. out, turn a kid. Some, if someone got shot. Yeah. It's like a basic, um, training now that's required. How like, it's like sexual assault, CPR and bl- blood. How to plug a hole. Plug a hole. In, <laughs> yeah. a, human, in a human's body. <laughs> and I, I mean, it's awful that we have to come to that point, but yeah, it's like, I guess it's, it's another negative thing that garners a ton of attention and then action is taken. <laughs> when the fun, the fun fact is the number one killer of, of Americans is heart disease. Really? But nope, nope, we don't want to talk to anyone about diets or exercise or jujitsu. Nope, because we... Well, that's how it comes into, like, (laughs) yes, a lot of people's money is on the line if you start making people only eat healthy. How are they supposed to make their money if you just eat stuff that's out of the ground? Can you imagine? If you're only just eating stuff straight out of the ground and it's, like, no no additives, how's anyone going to make money from all those processes? Imagine the industries that would go under if everyone started just eating better. Cereal, soda. Oh, my God, soda's the worst. Candy. Do you drink soda still? No. I don't, I don't touch it. I used to love it. I don't touch it now. It's like, po- I look at it like poison. You can do, you can get those stevia sodas. Have you had those? those are what are you good. holding up that coffee for? Coffee's not bad for you. you Mel- can, milk? You, it depends on how you dress the coffee. How dare you drink milk? You can you drink black it. coffee and you'll be all right. If you're, if you're, if you're I'm drink- actually, I, I like organic milk. Coffee is part of jizzy culture. We can't get rid of coffee. But a lot of people talk shit on milk and they, they're like, I, I I have been shamed for drinking. There's a milk. Kurtz Gazat video on whether milk is is poison or not. That's a great channel, by the way. Kurtz Kurtz Gazat. It's a wonderful channel. It's everyone, One of the best. Every, everyone should watch it. It's super cute, and if you're stoned when you watch it, it's really funny. Because and it's a great launch pad to like dive deeper into the topics. Oh yeah. If you if you see one that you enjoy, they do some on like futuristic like space. Yeah. Um, oh, it's structures. All, it's all, there's, all, there's all kinds of topics. They talk about CRISPR, gene editing, economic systems, war, mm-hmm. um, the human body, like cells, it's incre- viruses, it's like, it's in, I, black I, holes. I really like that YouTube is kind of taking that route towards like educational stuff, like because they can reach such a large audience with such important information to kind of combat just the inane. Who owns YouTube? Google. Is it, is it Google? Yeah. Man, they're ki- YouTube is killing it. Like there really is the go to. Like you can. You I don't can watch TV. It. I just watch YouTube. You can find anything on YouTube. Well, you you can find anything that interests you. That's what's great. It's hey, not guys, fed to you. Subscribe to my channel, Josh Hinger. Actually, it's Joshua. Joshua. Do you post stuff on there? I I have been more active lately. I don't know why I got an influx of YouTube subscribers, and I have no idea why. So I I just feel you know I feel I should feed that beast. I should. I oh should. yeah, any sort of platform you got to cultivate with content for sure. Yeah. So I've been filling it up. I've been I've been posting some stuff and I'm gonna I'm gonna be more active about it. Yeah, go follow maybe Josh. Some, maybe some jujitsu techniques. It's Joshua Hinger. There's also the Mapburn YouTube channel, which I have not uploaded many videos to, but it, it's out there. Yeah, <laughs> subscribe to it if you just want to support. Maybe I'll I'll upload some videos. Also, great news for those of you that are like some people on Reddit were like, "Well, do you remember Matt Burn? That was great while it lasted because <laughs> we're so inconsistent." <laughs> The main, the we're main, not inconsistent. Well, the we're main, consistently inconsistent. The main issue was that we don't have our studio yet, and but luckily, I finally got the permits to build the studio. It's being built over there. That's who I just waved by to Mark earlier. He's actually finally building the room. We're gonna have a concrete setup, not actual concrete. It will be not made of concrete, but it, it will be <laughs> sturdy and secure in there. No, I think people need to realize that we also have uh, other things going on. You went to Europeans. Mm-hmm. You have a, you're building a, a gym and an academy. Yeah, and these a are team. hectic times in our lives. I was traveling, doing a seminar tour. Like, dude, these seminar tours are necessary. This is how I function for the rest of the year because I need to make that money so that I can cushion my income for the rest of the year. Yeah, um, this is necessary. And uh, I got a podcast episode with Israel Adesanya, one of the UFC's brightest stars. He's the UFC. It's on champion. Spotify. It's not up yet. Oh, yeah. I was. I had to. I had to put together the um, the intro outro because I didn't want to bother him with all that crap. Yeah, we we have a bright future in podcasting because of our martial arts connections. We can reach a lot of people. I will say Israel's super cool. I'm and, sure he is. Um, this episode will probably be up before that episode, but maybe not. I don't know. I have to get it uploaded, but keep, we have it. Keep it in the bank. The point is, I traveled, and yeah, we can't do episodes every week, but 
doesn't mean I wasn't recording episodes because I got one with his coach, Eugene Behrman, who was the MMA coach of the year for 2019. Like, sorry, we couldn't do an episode every week for you guys, but you know what? It's a free podcast. We're doing our best. You know, it's it, honestly, it's a great thing that people want us to come back. Means we're doing a good job. This episode of the Matt Byrne podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. Mans- Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the belt grooming. I don't think it has to be below the belt necessarily. It can. Well, I, w- I have a story about above the belt I grooming. I also have a story. <laughs> Manscaping <laughs> offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels, but also other <laughs> areas of your body as well. But this you, you, is the product in question. Manscaped was nice enough to provide us with this lawnmower, as they call it's, it. It's the lawnmower, lawnmower 3.0, actually. It's a third iteration of the lawnmower. You can literally use this to mow your lawn. As well as you can, your you, body hair. You can use it to mow that lawn on your arms. Yeah. So I, <laughs> this is like how this came about. First of all, jiu-jitsu is a, a very high contact sport, right? Very, very grabby. It's grabby. Very grabby. If you've ever trained jiu-jitsu, especially in the gi, for some reason gi material, when someone grips your sleeve or your pants, it's very common for someone to... Grab a little more. Yeah, they just kind of yoke up a little more than they intended, yeah. especially if you got these hairy werewolf forearms like myself. I got some pretty hairy forearms, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, man. Did you see how- oh, that was my plan to do that to you, you son of a bee. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you right Dang, now. Dang, I got you. Good. This thing's powerful. This is the Manscaped Lawn Mower 3.0, and I would suggest you can use it however you want, but I would suggest... You can use it wherever you want. Yeah. Wherever, however you want. Some of you guys got some pretty hairy buttholes. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I would know from looking. Yeah, how do you know that? <laughs> locker room. I'm just sure. <laughs> locker uh, yeah. room observations. Yeah, maybe? it's just accidental locker room observations. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keyword accidental. Um, well, well, you have there's people like Nassar that would flaunt their stuff in the locker room on purpose. Yeah, there's some individuals who are especially hairy all over their body, and, and, and you need a Nassar. You need a device that isn't gonna. Cut you up. Isn't going to butcher you. You could get scratched potentially. Or, or a chance. Or just cut. You could probably just use this as your everyday shaver too if you're just trying to keep your well, beard under control. Yeah. You could use it on your face, but would you want to use it on your face after <laughs> it? You, oh, God. My, oh, my God. You are such. This is your hair all over it. That was your hair well, also. Right. But I, I had to do a little test of myself. myself. Where did you do the test? I just like trimmed down a little bit of like chest hair action. Are you sure it was your chest hair? Yeah. But if, you know, I like to just rock it all natural. You know? You, you promised me it was your chest yeah, hair? Yeah, all over. Because like, I, I, I saw, showed you I saw hair f- fragments on there. Yeah. I just trimmed it, took a little off the top. From your chest. I didn't want to get rid of all Are you my sure it was hair. your chest though? Yeah. I just okay. wanted to, I just Good. wanted to test it out. See, it's, it's cutting power because uh, any, any old shaver can, if you really get up in there and shave off a piece, it can get it. But what about like the fine details? Like if you're just trying to like take a little bit off the top right there, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just some pruning, I fucking hate you. some pruning action. This is p- pretty powerful for, for its size. You may find a more powerful trimmer somewhere out there but for the size this is a compact beast so uh, some of you guys may know that i i shave my legs this is true this josh is shaves shaves his legs it helps a ton it's a strategic with escaping leg loss strategic jujitsu move so i can slip out of the leg locks uh, in a nogi situation Jeez. and there has been there have been a few times in the past when i was in a, a weird shower that would was shaped in a way that would make oh. it difficult for me to to get the back of my calves and I had a razor and I'm I'm dragging the razor up the back of my calf and my hand slipped and I just slashed my leg open this wide bro inch and a half at least like just a, a laceration on my leg blood just started gushing out of it can you imagine accidentally doing that to your balls for those of you that need to That'd get be a horrific. Up close and personal shave on the family jewels <laughs> That'd be hor- you horrific. do not want that happened. I've butchered my legs with razors and trimmers for years. And luckily, I don't have any horror stories about uh, the family jewels, but I could very easily see someone making that mistake and butchering butchering the jewels. Well, this is the third generation trimmer. It's and called the Lawnmower 3.0. Yes, it is. It features a cutting edge ceramic blade that helps prevent those manscaping accidents that you were. But how many, RP- how many RPMs per minute? 7,000 that doesn't make sense. RPMs. 7,000 RPMs. 7,000 revolutions per minute per minute. That's a lot. 
That's uh, that's a lot. That's quick, impressive. Back, back that's impressive. Of the, back of the napkin, napkin math that comes out to about what do we decide? Seven hundred. It's around eight hundred revolutions per second. Wow, that's <laughs> that's scary. Actually, that's a lot. That actually would put us at at uh, seven thousand seven thousand RPMs in seven seconds. So our math needs work, but it's Brr. a lot. That's a lot of speed <laughs> and power behind this thing, and that's probably why you're not getting as many damaged body parts because it's just operating at such a swift velocity it's only getting hairs in there yeah so i'm gonna actually use it on my arms uh right now go ahead and just go hook me up well one of the coolest hook, features hook me up, one of the coolest features of this device is it's led yeah light so you can operate in the, the dead of night <laughs> so <laughs> so when you're so, <laughs> if you ever so had when, a nightly excursion so when your body's folded in half and you're trying to look at the space underneath your balls and you're trying to get up in there you have the light to guide your way yeah or just any if you're trying to get if you're trying to get to the gooch any sort of <laughs> midnight excursion that you need to do some trimming it's got a light on it so and not only even though it has a light its battery will last up to 90 minutes so you can spend that's impressive you can spend 90 minutes <laughs> shaving your body into just a sleek no rush <laughs> a sleek aerodynamic figure like a, like you're wearing a leather suit <laughs> like the gimp yeah, you know, you'll be slick. Like the gimp. Going to a nogi competition, wearing just some short bad boy. That was a Pulp Fiction reference. Bad boy fight fight shorts. Lucas yeah. Barbosa style. And all it, sleek. No one's going to be able to It's It's quiet, you. right? It's also very quiet. So your roommate I mean, won't necessarily. Li- listen to yourself, right? I'm going to turn it on. Just kidding. There it is. Ooh, listen to that hum. Mm. Oh, the startup noise was louder. Yeah, but listen to that gentle hum. That's Every, quiet. And these everybody are, loves a hummer. These are like the high, <laughs> highest quality mics you can get for podcasting, and I, you can barely hear it. Guys, the best news is you get 20% off and free shipping if you use the code MATBURN at manscaped.com. 20% off and free shipping if you use the code MATBURN at manscaped.com. Check it out. And I think it's important. Like I think podcasting, too, is a very important part of getting away from the the mainstream, the like, ma- like getting your information through Instagram and social media, yeah. is because it's not real people. Yeah, there's it's it's people writing fake shit and comments. Right. People per- like putting themselves out there in a way that is most, um, like the way they want to be viewed. It's through a lens, through a filter. You're not seeing these people's real lives. You're not seeing how they actually articulate themselves and their actual ideas. But a podcast doesn't hide any of that. It's this like this is us. This is actually us how we communicate our ideas there's actually other except because of like rage culture online we have to watch what is we that, say is that a thing rage culture yeah people just get pissed off about nothing someone else's life living their own life they get pissed oh, off about something they said and try like, to cancel them like, w- like when i did no meat in november and everyone got offended <laughs> yeah why do you guys give a fuck what i eat oh there's an article about you too is there on flow grappling one of the main things is hinder reflects on his adcc bronze why did you say my name like that don't play that right now. Why did you say? Why did you say my? Uh, name? How do I say your name? You know how to say my name. Why did you say it like did that? Did I pronounce it incorrectly? Yeah, you I did. just pronounced it phonetically. Galvao still does it too, and I don't know if he's trolling me <laughs> or. If, I, I like man. I've known you for so long, and I, I don't. I don't understand why people want to say Hinder. You know, I go to seminars and I have to tell people, don't call me Hinder. Just, yeah. just call me Josh. A lot of people call me Keenus now, and I, I think that's like such a <laughs> shitty version of the joke. Like it's not funny <laughs> to me, <laughs> to but me. it's it's funny that people chances, actually chances over there laughing. It's funny that people <laughs> actually do it. It's so stupid, bro. Th- you started this because you called me Hinger, and you explained to everyone that it's Hinger. Yeah, but you totally just changed my name. I'm just pronouncing your name how it's actually spelled. If you were like. Kinon or something. <laughs> <laughs> like some variation of the actual spelling. Kinon. 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 Ke- like no, that. guys. It's not Kinon. It's Kinus. But you have to like, it's not like a Kinus. It's like a, it's like, you know how Kynan has that lip, that lisp? Yeah. Kinith. It's a lisp, <laughs> it's a lisp actually. Everyone's been doing it wrong with the Kinus. Should Ke- we talk about... Um, Kinith. Um, I want to know what you think about that little dwarf kid that got like, filthy rich overnight because he uh they made a gofundme well uh, i don't know the full story i don't know the full story either i don't think anyone knows the full story that's the problem i mean i know the video <laughs> chances you know, ra- chances raising his you hand. know the story wait let, let me let me unplug one of my ears here just so he's he's nine years old is he not because they were saying he's 18 and then he's, he's 
nine. Yeah, there's, there's I, like, I think that's irrefutable evidence that he's a he's a child. Yeah, there are people who are getting online saying that he's like eighteen, but he's not. There's factual evidence. Yeah, you can see his posts that his birthdays and he's stuff. He's had brain surgery and things like that. He's had a lot of stuff wrong with him, but he his mom filmed a video. He was talking about how he wanted to kill himself. Get closer to the mic. He was getting made fun of. So, yeah, he's just, he got made fun of, and he said he wanted to kill himself. His mom put it up online, and then all of a sudden he blew up, and now well, everyone's reaching out. First of all, I think it's awesome. Like, this is the power of the internet, right. positive and negative. Right, you right. see both sides of the story here. It's like you can, like, the overwhelming positive, invi- in, like, the overwhelming positive community. Everyone's knee-jerk reaction was to help. It's to help. Right. But just like the kids, just like you said, ha-ha, like the bullies. The Nelson. Just all the people on the internet, like. The Nelsons. That, he's, it's actually fake. He's a liar. He's, he's 18, actually 18 years and they old. Just, he's an actor, and he did that to try and get money. It's like, What? Like, can we just give the guy the benefit of the doubt, maybe, right. and like figure out, like, before you start making those claims, right? Like, you idiots. And maybe he is an actor. That doesn't necessarily mean he wasn't being bullied. It right. doesn't mean that 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 video wasn't sincere. Yes, and it's it's it is the cult. Like, kids are little toxic little shitheads. They are, especially fact. when they get together in groups, and like that shows the like human nature on like its undeveloped side. Like before your frontal lobe fully develops, and you your your actual thinking brain overpowers your limbic system of your your weird little monkey desires <laughs> you know like that's how kids are they're just little monkeys running around and they're just like throwing their shit everywhere and that's how a lot of the adult population on the internet is too because they think it like they, they can like retract back to that mindset because they're safe behind the internet and they know that if they did that in person they would get ostracized but the internet provides a a safe, veil a, of safety. A, safe, a safe place. Yeah, anyone who... Safe any, space. If of, you're doing, like, honestly... Safe space of hatred. You need to stop trolls, bro. <laughs> Crusade against trolls. <laughs> These trolls need to be eliminated. No, I think it's awful. And I think any sort of bullying that's going on, it's like, why... Like, you need to be accepting. And and it's... Look, I, I think... I, I think Tom DeBlas did a good job with his posting. You know, he, he reached out. He said, I want to help this kid. He was one of the first people that said, I want to help this kid. Uh, can we fly him out to my academy? I was like, wow, that's really cool. And then, of course, everyone fired back, was like, oh, you got got. He got you. He's fa- he's faking it and blah, blah, blah. And Tom was like. Propagating misinformation. Yeah, and pro- Tom was like, look, I don't give a fuck what you guys think. My offer still stands. If the kid wants to come out and train, I want to help him. And that's that. And and I think he, he's right. I think it's better to err on the side of compassion than to err on the side of neglect. True. If you neglect this kid who's being bullied and wants to kill himself, maybe he kills himself. If you err on the side of compassion, maybe you help someone who didn't need as much help as they, they made it sound like, but it's better to err in that direction. Right. And like taking that route is just a bunch like, yeah. It's like the death penalty. It's better to err in the side of innocence than to err on the side of guilt Mm. to execute someone who is innocent is the greater misdeed than to let a a guilty man go free. Right. And say if someone were to create a situation like this, which has happened before people have created like fake GoFundMes for stuff. Obviously most of those aren't accompanied by video showing the actual tragedy, you know, and that does exist, but like for people to kind of just brush it off is really silly, and to propagate that information is really silly. And even if it was fake, entirely set up, there's still something to be fixed about that situation. A group of people has created a if someone has created a fake thing, they need to be brought to the light, anyways. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and that's what the Justice Department does. That's that's what they do. They chase people that are frauds. Like it's illegal to be a fraud. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. to gain to have like massive financial gain. Right. Based on a false narrative, like you can, I mean, I don't know the details behind what's legal and what's not, but I'm pretty sure you can get busted pretty hard. Oh, for sure. You'll get, yeah, they'll take it all back. You know, if you want to go check out that, that series on uh, Netflix called Dirty Money and episode two is about the guy that did that 500 fast cash business and he was doing payday loans. I mean, it was technically legal what he was doing, but the justice department was just like, we don't give a fuck. What you're doing is wrong morally and we're going to fuck you. And they hit him with the largest cla- like largest uh, lawsuit ever in the history of the Justice Department. It was like $1.2 billion. They literally took him for everything he's worth. Yeah. But legally, what he was doing, in the, uh, based on the paper, the, the, as the, the, the letter of the law, it was legal. Mm-hmm. But justice got served. Yeah. I think ultimately when you're, when you're pushing a lot of that negative stuff in your life and taking advantage of it, it always comes back to get you. 
What do you think about bullying? Do you think it's, uh, would, are you going to teach your kid to like punch, fight back? Hell yeah. Punch them? Hell Hit yeah. Them? Don't go tell a teacher. Fuck telling a teacher. No, t- kick their ass and then tell the teacher <laughs> the whole story. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've always, my dad always told me, he's like, don't start fights, but if someone fucks but, with but you. But more importantly, I don't think that's what needs to be taught. I think what needs to, like, even my child, when I have a child, could be a bully if I don't properly raise him and teach him compassion right. and empathy towards others and right. acceptance because it's like, just because you you fit in with the other kids doesn't mean that you're not a, a you're perfect. Anyone can get made fun of. It could literally, no one is safe, you know? Yeah, people can turn on you for any reason, and the only way to ensure that that doesn't happen is like make sure that children understand that not everyone is equal and created differently. Well, everyone is e- sorry. That's poor, poor everyone mis- is everyone e- is equal, but not always. Um, we're not the same. We're not the same. We're all equally different. Yeah, there you go. And that's more important than like teaching like how to fight back against bullies. Is like how do we educate shitty little kids? Because so many kids can just be shitheads if you don't. I mean, teach adults them. too, man. Even a, a bunch of good kids can get together, and just because they all got together, they can create a shitty situation where they all just like pack the, mentality. The pack mentality, yeah, right. And that's a which bit, is like how like the, how internet works. That's like a real internet thing. trolls is like a pack mentality thing. It's like yeah, something I can get involved with. I'm a part of something, right, <laughs> and right. it didn't like now you're just a piece of shit. <laughs> get off the internet. Go read a book, man. Stop writing these shitty comments and go educate yourself and actually learn something sick of it in other news <laughs> i'm gonna have kids classes here soon i gotta i gotta whip these kids into shape teach them how to not be little jerks are you gonna have an anti-bullying program i think that should how be do you feel about this? that should be intrinsic in just what all education i don't i always thought about it, like you know because i like teaching kids and i and i i like discouraging a bullying um I think I think just in, inadvertently, How when a kid learns jujitsu, they're not really going to be as much of a bully because they understand that there's always someone who can kick their ass. You know? Well, yeah, this but is, a bully doesn't always understand. This that. is the whole idea that jujitsu makes the world a better place. I posted yeah. this like three and, days ago, and in fact, some some of the biggest jerks are just the people that never got beaten jujitsu, so they never learned. They never had got the ego check because they just were always the best. Some people can be jerks like that, so it's important to actually lose in jujitsu so you actually keeps you. Keeps you, keeps you grounded. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, then, because uh, if, if you're one of the best jiu-jitsu guys, then it's like, well, especially you, if that happens at a young age. Bro, but everyone's, know. everyone had that first year of jiu-jitsu where they got fucked up by everyone. What, everyone well, had that. What about if it was like, someone slips through the cracks. It's like they had a white belt program where they only trained with other white belts. And then they transitioned to like the Get more. Get out of here, bro. <laughs> Everybody's lost. It, it doesn't matter if you're white or blue belt. Your instructor used to kick your ass. That's true. That's, true. that's a fact. Yeah. And that's important. To, to, to put perspective on things beyond just uh, technical skill. Um, I was I was trying to think of a nice segue to bring up uh, the idea of men smashing girls in training. I was trying to think of it. Are they being bullies? Is that a bullying situation, or is that more like is that more of an alpha male? Haven't we, haven't we talked about this before? Yeah, but I was just I don't know. I just I brought it up the other day in conversation and. and I had a, a different perspective on it and I want to talk about it again. Yeah. But is, is it, I don't know. What is, is it? It's not a bullying situation. It's more of like an ego. Like I'm going to show you how strong I am. So you, you'll like me. Right. Isn't that why people bully other people is they want other people to like them. Is that, a, is that a thing? Or am I just making that up? That's like some deep right? psychology because you're trying to get people to, you're trying to get other people to like you or think you're cool. That's why I you're know. bullying someone. Not necessarily even other people, but just you're trying to like yourself. Like maybe you don't like yourself and you're looking for some sort of validation that puts you above someone else. I think that comes trying to elevate I think, yourself I think, by pushing uh, others down. How this works is something called the dominance hierarchy in psychology. Oh, let's hear it. The dominance hierarchy is like in your tribe, your institution, whatever you're involved in, a group of friends, a gym, the workplace, someone rises to the top and someone goes to the bottom. The guy who gets made fun of, the guy who kind of gets shit from everyone else. Maybe he's not bullied, but he's low on the totem pole. And when you're low on the totem pole and you're, especially for men, you're looking to get a leg up over someone else. So you're not at the bottom of the totem pole anymore. Right. And so I think that kind of thing can come from men who are so low on the totem pole that they can't, they, they, they can't need even, to get above someone. They can't compete with the other men. So they look for someone lower, like someone that they can dominate in other areas, maybe right. physically or some, in, through some sort some means, some negative means. Just and so, belittling people. And there's, to- 
to elevate themselves. And there's two ways that it can go. They can either just feel really shitty about themselves. because, And, man, if you've seen someone who lacks confidence, you can see they are not rising up the totem pole. Like, if they lack confidence. It affects their entire life. Right. So yeah, they, they can right. take a non-aggressive approach, and maybe they just wallow in their own self-worth or their own perception of their self-worth. Or they take the different route where they try and get a leg up, and that sort of little evil guy comes out where they're trying to, like, claw back onto the totem pole like they're drowning and i think that can come out through like like you're saying uh girls on the mat who are getting beat up by a man it's like maybe when you're low in the totem pole you bet your ass that girls aren't interested in you so you're trying to impress them by beating them up it's like you got to do something i mean they're trying to do something they're trying to and maybe they don't know how to go about it in a healthy way they don't know how to like maybe they have a personality trait that's like really abrasive they're just like make bad jokes all the time chance i just (laughs) <laughs> making these bad jokes all the time. I just hear, <laughs> I just hear from women all the time telling me about this is some big guy that laid on them and smashed them and didn't give them a chance to even have a very productive role. I think that's a different thing though. That's a different thing that I'm talking about. So we're, so you're I think be, that is like what you're talking about. It's more of like, almost like a, are they trying to uh, impress uh, them? Uh, ultimately I think it's like a sexual thing. Like where they're trying to like, they're trying to establish some sort of a dominance over a woman in a, in a place where it's like, technically socially acceptable to be dominant physically over a woman but it's like that's not what the situation is actually designed for but it can kind of slip through the cracks and if you're a perverse kind of man you could satisfy some sort of dominate dominance need you have in your head by being a dick to women on the mat like i just have zero 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 desire to just beat up a girl in training i just don't have that desire i don't even want to submit them not even once i just want to roll and make it a flow, make it a nice technical flow and just check the transitions and see how you can get from point A to point B smoothly without using all your strength, without using your man grips, you know, like without using your weight. Mm -hmm. Like that's, for me, that's quite challenging because I always use my strength and my power when I, when I train with guys like you, Mm -hmm. you know, that's all I got is strength, power, weight, everything I have to roll with a, a girl it's an opportunity to to hit like a nice technical flow roll where you're not using the same attributes, same physical attributes that you would normally use against a, someone who's your same size and weight. It's an opportunity. It's a good way to develop yourself. So why are you just going to lay on them and smash them and just like well, not the, let them do anything? There's it's another fucking stupid. There's there's a couple ways this can play out too because owning a gym has really opened my eyes to like the different levels of people's understanding of jujitsu and like or even any martial art, like you, you can teach some people the moves perfectly. You can tell them what it's about. You can conceptualize it. You can cover all the areas at like, as far as like getting in shape, understanding what jujitsu is about, the philosophy of it, whatever. And they can still have no clue exactly what's going on. Like they can just be coming in here. They just enjoy it. They enjoy the vibe. They enjoy the feeling of it. They like it, but maybe they don't really understand how to use their body, you know, and maybe they'll never know how to use their body. And so, like, against a, a, someone who's better than them, which maybe a lot of people are better than them. Like, have you ever seen someone good do that? Like, like if you at, at a good gym, are you ever going to see one of the better guys do that to a girl? No. No. Because they are, are yeah. aware of how to use their body. But some yeah. men are not. They're completely inept as far as, like, coordination, their ability to, like, put the techniques into real life, you know? I saw something happen here um, one time where like a guy went for like a totally benign Kimura trap movement and he did the technique right, but he didn't understand that a woman's body is lighter than a man's and it's not going to roll in the same way when you sit down and your heavier man weight falls and yanks her with you Mm -hmm. and the girl face planted instead of rolling. Yeah. And so like just that, like not understanding like how gravity works and momentum and inertia of the movement and not really being aware of the three dimensional space of that you're controlling. It's these two objects moving through 3d space and you have to kind of be able to visualize in your brain where their body is going to go pre like before it happens. That's a good point actually. And so like that can happen in jujitsu rounds and like that can happen even through pressure. Like a man might not understand how pressure works. Right. Like just because they're heavier, doesn't mean they understand what weight is because they've never felt they've it never, themselves. Maybe they've never felt they well they probably get smashed themselves at some point, but they they were fine. So right. why won't this girl be fine? You know, maybe they're not. And they then especially um, beginner men, they probably see all over the internet girls beating up dudes, and they're like, "Damn, I don't want to get my." I'm ass not gonna kicked. let that happen to me. Yeah, I'm not gonna let this girl kick my ass. Fuck that. Like, it, it happens. Girls can. I there's a, a you know Judea Judea. Yeah, she went. I, I walked into a tournament, the Tap Cancer Out event. Great event, by the way. Make sure to 
always support Tap Cancer Out, one of the few tournaments that is doing good for the world. Jiu-Jitsu nonprofit organization. Amazing people, amazing team there. I walk in and she's fighting and she's like, she's a lapel whiz kid and she just like straight up did these guys dirty, dude. She was like she's good, sweeping huh? the shit out of them, <laughs> taking their back, triangle, oh, triangling them, yeah. like just beating these boys' asses. Yeah. Like as a co ed division. And not boys like and girls. And when I say ruthlessly, I don't mean through physicality, but through sheer technique and, and skill. Yeah. And like that is a real thing. And then there's like if you just take her female body versus a, a boy who's bigger than her, like at that age, it doesn't matter because their, their strength is the same. Like girls, in, in fact, girls mature a little faster. So they might even have a leg up on strength at a certain point in time. Yeah. But then when it gets to adulthood, these girls are skilled still. Yeah. Like if I don't like if I don't do proper technique versus a girl who knows what she's doing, she's gonna kick my ass. Right. And at a certain point, some in some positions, girls may be more skilled than men in the position. Like it's it's that happens all the time, even at an equal level. Like two black belt, a man, male and female, the female will be better in some positions than the man. Yeah. It's unavoidable because no one, despite the strength, disparity. no one can be good at everything in jujitsu. Right. So of course. you can get your ass kicked by a girl, and if you have a frail ego, that might register with you in some way. To the point that you don't want to let that happen. So you kind of compensate for your lack of skill in that position through strength. You know? Some people can't let go of the ego of letting a girl climb all over them and beat their ass. You know? Because they've never experienced what it's like to kick ass. So they don't understand that it goes both ways. So some advice for the listeners. If you guys are training with a female who's much smaller than you and less skilled than you. Or even the same skill but just significantly smaller Maybe don't use all your power. It's very easy. You just match their strength. Like literally, you only push or pull as hard as they're pulling. And if they beat your ass, it's because they're better than you. And that's that. And that's that. And you need to accept that you should not be using strength to compensate for your bad technique. Just get better. Boom. And if you don't do that, people are going to notice in the room. And they're going to be like, probably people, like in jiu-jitsu rooms, people grow like a family and feel protective over others. And another like thing that males do is become overprotective of females, even when it's unwarranted. And that, which is a whole other issue, which can like, even if they mean well, can be toxic yeah. in a jiu-jitsu environment. Um, but you need to understand that's not how things work in the jiu-jitsu scene. And that's something that instructors don't necessarily teach. Another issue is people going for like really crazy dynamic moves when they don't really understand how they work. That's very dangerous. Like when they're trying to do the arm drag and take the back and they try to jump and then they, they miss and they land on the side of the knee and blow your knee out. Yeah. J- flying arm bars, jumping clothes guard and, a, and like flying arm bar. Don't, laying on something. Just, like, don't just don't jump. jump. Just don't jump. But it also don't judo. Judo. I've seen a lot of like people attempting judo moves when they haven't been fully They educated. haven't been trained by Cause, a, ju- cause a for, proper judoka. For Legion, <laughs> I had a lot of people come from other gyms here. Like yeah. in, when, in the beginning, a lot of people were just from other gyms. Maybe they're unhappy with it. Maybe they're just fans, whatever. Right. They came here. But they were not trained by me. And so a lot of them are doing crazy things. You saw their bad habits. Yeah, it was like, what is going on here? And so, like, it's very important you have good instructors that teaching these moves right. Because if you're, t- if some guy is just like, oh, check out this move I saw on YouTube, it's this like double sleeve Sanagi, and they, the person can't base because you have both their hands, and right, then someone right. tries it. I saw some near accidents happen. Like, what was? Why did you just try that move when you have no idea what you're doing? Yeah. Which is why part of the reason Justin Flores is here now. So like teach yeah. these guys proper takedowns and how and also how to fall and how you know, there's a lot of things there's a lot to be taught. Was there was there a common thing that you saw from these people that came from other academies? Like it was never com- like what well, well, like, was it jumping clothes guard the, or what No, was no. It? The well, very few of the things were actually dangerous. They were there and I, I saw the situation and then immediately was like, I don't want an accident to happen, so I'm gonna fix the situation right away or just like not allow them to do that technique or at least like educate them on how to do it properly. Um, but the biggest issue <laughs> that I found for people coming from other gyms is just, <laughs> it's so silly, but it's like when I say sweep, we, when we warm up with like sweep for sweep, for instance, like sweeping back and yeah, forth yeah. a lot, this isn't like a danger to anything, maybe a danger to their own ability to like be good at jiu-jitsu, but like the one sweep, the lasso sweep where you just like grab their knee and you just like tilt them over. Yeah. That sweep does not work. Right. It's not effective, but it's like the number one go-to sweep that everyone from another gym does. Or from what I've seen, it's like very common. And it's like that thing is being taught over and over in all these gyms, even now. And it's like a prime part of people's curriculum. It's like, why are you teaching people that move when it's not effective? Do you think it's a bullshit move? I mean, you can make it work. Any move can work for sure. Yeah. I think that move really sucks. Can the Barambola work? Yeah. 
Okay, so it's not dead. I never said it was dead. I saw I saw a, a headline, a news headline. I, <laughs> I have said the words "barren bullet" doesn't work. I'm, I'm just kidding. As an educational, well, sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah, but sometimes it does. It's a low percentage move. That's yeah. all it is. Doesn't mean it doesn't work. Flying armbar is a low percentage move. It's cool as fuck, but it's rare. You've had some experience with flying armbars that were, did not go favorably. Yeah, but you know I've had a lot that did go favorably too. That's it's true. just a, it's a number. It's yeah, it's, it's not reliable. I would it's say. An, yeah, I've jumped on many flying armbars that worked quite well, but sometimes it doesn't work out. It's an, it's a numbers game. It's a probability. Right. You know they say if there's a probability of something happening, it will happen eventually. Right. In a long enough timeline. Doesn't matter if it's a billionth of a percent. It will happen eventually in enough time. So there's a really cool video you guys go check out on YouTube that I found the other night. It was a time lapse of the future of time, and it was amazing. So so time would increase exponentially, and it just went through the the the, the universe's evolution over trillions and trillions and trillions of years. It was actually amazing. Now tell me this: if you rewinded it, if after it rewinded to, it, if you act, got to the end, and is then it you, rewound it? If you rewinded it. What's the past tense? If rewind? you rewound it. All right, whatever. <laughs> if you rewound it and every particle that was in that motion that it, it made it to the end of the universe, would it play back in reverse in the same way? And then could you play it again and would it come to the same outcome? So that's the question behind dark energy is will gravity suck the universe back into itself and have the big crunch or will the expansion continue until we have the big rip? That's that not my question. My question is that are the forces of there nature is no so end of constant? The universe. No, you're not understanding my question. Okay, ask again. Okay, the universe is a is a mass collection of particles, atoms, right? No. What are what is it then? I mean, there there are atoms inside the floating around inside the universe. The universe is empty space. The bait. Okay. And no particles, and eventually all particles will dissolve. The universe and degenerate as w- and just and fall apart. There'll be no particles at some point. Okay, there will be in supermassive black holes. Not part, they won't fall apart. There's no particles inside a supermassive black hole. It's a singularity. It's too small. But it's it's it no still one, has mass. No one, no one knows. It has mass. <laughs> yeah. You don't you don't know. You're trying okay. <laughs> no, they yes, black holes have mass, yes. Let me explain again. Because I know I know more about this than you do. <laughs> I've watched so many YouTube videos about this. I'm gonna fuck you up right now. All right, I, I just won't get into it. But you're clearly the wrong person to have this conversation with. I think we're a couple white belts talking about some shit that we really don't understand. I am a white belt three stripe in I'm space. I'm astrophysics white belts with no stripes. It had to. T- it tied into with probability, but okay. I can I can see that you're not ready to have this conversation. I'm I'm ready to listen. To I'll what give you, you some reading material, and then we can. Come I'm back ready to it. listen to what you have to say. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't want to say anything. Okay, but for real, us talking about astrophysics is the same thing as two. I just had a question. I was posing a question to the audience. I want to, hey, let's and hear you it. just tried to shut me down, like, okay, just like say a bunch of shit that was not relevant okay, to go. The, the conversation. The video, I'm sure, is super cool. Basically, it's a base over time, which is a human construct to to quantify moments passing in different states of the universe, basically. And a state of the universe is really just the particles that make up the mass of the universe. Right there's mass and then there's energy. Energy affects the the mass. The mass is a collection of particles that have atoms, weight. Atoms, atoms, and you know what atoms are made up of as well in the quantum Sub- subatomic level. particles. Right. All of those are acted upon by the different forces of the universe. Do you know the four forces? Um, strong nuclear, uh, weak nuclear, gravity, and electromagnetic. Exactly beautiful so all of those engage in the particles themselves yeah and c- cause them to interact with each other and is my is a myriad myriad of ways mirad a mirad how do you pronounce it yeah. a mirad a, a variety of ways now if those forces are constant and they all act in the same way and we can, we have a scientific model that is accurate to reality would that mean that as these particles engage with each other through these massive cosmic events of you know, stars going supernova and the mass contr- uh, being conglomerated together into these black holes. Could you play it to the end of the universe, the ice death, as you called it, mm-hmm. the heat death of the universe? Could you rewind it to the beginning and play it again? Would it end in the same way or would it be completely different? Would the outcome be different somehow? I mean, if you could rewind it and then replay it forward, it, w- it should be the same. It should be the same, right? But it would it? <laughs> And is prob like is <laughs> probability? I didn't see. I didn't expect that to be the question. Is probability 
I think it wouldn't be. But it's probable. I think it wouldn't be. If there is a probability, it's probable. And if it's if there is well, yeah, something I, is probable, it right. will I guess in, in a different in a different Go check the universe, video, guys. In a different universe, it would play out differently. It's a time lapse of the future of time. It's amazing. It's it's a 30 minute video and Earth is dead within about a, the first minute of that video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we only got like 300 million years left, man. It's like it's a really impressive. It's almost over. It's really impressive. No, what they were saying the point of the video was the universe is an infant. It just started. And there's so much more time to go. I think it's only 14 billion years old. That's why it's very important that we colonize Mars and become a multiplanetary species. 14 billion is not that long in the grand scale of where we're headed. Yeah. We're babies. But well, it was very interesting because what they were basically explaining was the universe like, is a baby. Like our life, our, our, are even human, less than that. our human life is just a tiny little blip on this, the, the scale of time. And there's going to be so many more opportunities for life to appear and evolve and then die multiple times that's not necessarily true if you if you look I mean, into it is necessarily true it's it's a probability it's pretty f- it's a probability pr- it's like a one in f- um 500 quintillion okay, probability you go watch that fermi paradox video again i did watch it again i will it's it's a probability yeah if it's a probability it's going to happen did they give a, a time estimate on the heat death at what point it's what? an ice death. Ice death, whatever. Heat death, it, just, it means the same thing. Bro, One, the, the heat dies. It, listen. The other, you're calling it listen. ice. It, the universe is dead because it is I gone I know icy. the listeners are fucking asleep right now because we're not even talking about jujitsu. But I know we're, we're I'm gonna, not talking to you right okay, now. This is between me and you <laughs> and the ice and the heat of the universe. Look, at, at, <laughs> the, at, at the end of this video, the number that you're- I haven't you, seen the video. I know. I just give me. Let me just give you a time ref, a reference for time. The end of this video, it has the little, the count, the, the year counter yeah, yeah, at the yeah. bottom. It was- one trillion, 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 trillion years into the future. That doesn't make sense because you can't like. Yeah, there's no, no there's number. no fucking number for it. That's what I'm saying. Right. But yeah, it, intelligent it, life is very rare. It doesn't matter how rare it is because there's so much time. Do you, so if you hum, say if humans um, start colonizing the galaxy and then eventually the universe and we somehow we can call, figure we'll, out the we'll speed never get outside of our local galactic, galactic cluster. cluster and that's not maybe we could yeah i guess unless you can bend unless space you could like somehow time. quant yeah there it's it could be right if we if, if we somehow beat the ability if we can move faster <laughs> than the speed of light which is impossible maybe through some sort of like quantum tunneling situation um, think do you have something to say chance i think we lost all of our listeners what Warp drive, yeah. Warp drive is where you actually bend space time to like trans move di- vast di- distances without violating the speed of light constant. Can we, we can't move faster than that. Can we ship? But wouldn't these? it be so cool if humanity makes it? And it's like that. That's something that humanity has to deal. It like, would be cool. I mean, we wouldn't be humanity by then. We'd evolve into like it's probably some sort of super freaky. Humanity. I'm pretty sure humans are just like here to build the next intelligence, and we're just going to be irrelevant. Think about this: we are Homo sapiens, right? Uh huh. What is the next uh, term for our future selves? Right? Yeah. There was there was Neanderthals. There was Homo erectus. We're going to be cybernetic. There was... We're, Before, hom- we're currently Homo sapiens. Is that right, Chance? Yeah, right. So what's the next one? What's the next version of us? It's going to be cybernetic. What's Homo it going to be, be, be called? What's it going to be called? What What's the future us going to be called? Who knows, dude? Who makes those rules? Who makes the... Who, I don't know. Who names them? I got a question. Uh, do you, are you familiar with the Mikey Moose and Mechie Challenge? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's ten thousand dollars? Yeah. If you can beat Mikey. I guess. Is it up for is it up to anyone? Obviously not. It's just a marketing ploy to get everyone talking it's, about it. It's like the Gracie Challenge. Well they get to pick like Mikey well, gets to pick. For Mikey. Right? Yeah. It's like, oh well, everyone everyone wants to make to ten grand, let's pick the best the, the guy that Mikey has the best chance of beating. So you have to beat Mikey to get ten thousand dollars? Is that it? Is just you have a match? It's a super fight I think challenge. That's how it works, yeah. Are you gonna do it? Uh I think Herbert's doing it. I didn't volunteer. No, I don't need ten thousand dollars right now. I know, but would you consider it? Mm. To be honest, I don't want to. I don't really. I, I don't want to fight a fellow. I don't want to make it a like. Here's the thing. You don't want to fight a fellow American. Yeah, it's like <laughs> like let's not. Uh, you just want to fight Brazilians. No, I want to fight everyone. But I, I think <laughs> here's the thing. I think there's very few Americans that are doing it well. Mikey's one of them. He's doing a great job. I mean, and like yeah. he, like neither of us is going to like get rich off of that fight. <laughs> like. That that prize money is not really super significant in the grand scheme of super fights. It is not really special. However, Mikey is special. Well, I just thought it'd be cool to have a match with Mikey. I th- yeah, it's it's great. And Mikey's gonna be doing opens at events 
right. all of us are going to fight him if we keep doing opens. He'll probably that's, he'll oh, probably make true. it. Like every he's going to fight everyone. So like the spectacle of it is like great for sure. Let's do it. Mikey's amazing. He's like literally the best American. The best. Yeah, he is. He's incredible. Um, I don't think I would want to like create some sort of animosity between the Americans to hi- like hype it up or anything. And it's like no matter what you do, no matter how respectful we can't, are of each other, we just you know, Flo is going to be like hyping it up, hyping it up in a <laughs> negative way. And I'm not about to give them that ammo <laughs> just so they can post the title. <laughs> Barambolo proven. <laughs> Barambolo <laughs> versus Wormguard. Which is better, you know? And then it's like, okay, here, the problem with fighting someone who's much smaller than you is like, it's tough. One, you're not going to match his strength. Like, you're not going to go easy. Right. Like, if you're going to win, you're going to have to use all your fucking strength. It's a lose lose. Like, if I were to fight. Like, oh, you it, beat a little guy. Good job. Yeah, it's like, congratulations. Jerk. And then not only that, it's you're like, you have, the guy's so fucking good, you have to use every ounce of your strength. Oh, yeah, which yeah, which yeah, could potentially result in him getting injured. Because, like, if you've rolled to someone who's small, no matter how good they are, like, if weight, you start throwing your hips, if around. you start, like, like using a lot of strength, like, things can get injured. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Especially if you're trying to win. Like, there's a different, like, you're going to go into that fight and you're going to be like, damn, do I try and win? Like, or do I try and have, like, a technical match and, like, you know, not just, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, you can get real, like, you can get real violent with someone who's smaller than you if you really want to. And that's not going to be, it's not going to be a fun yeah. experience people for gonna, anyone. People are going to look, yeah. it's going to look bad. Like what, like you could just, just like that massive guy just went into his clothes guard. Like you could just hold on to him and close guard after getting like double guard pull, come up, hold on to him and close guard. And he, maybe he just can't sweep you because you, you outweigh him by 80 pounds. Right. And you just stay in his clothes guard and you like try and you, pass in different you, ways. You win because you came up by an advantage. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, there's many ways to win a fight. Not mi- like the the way that is exciting is the one that it's like a, a dynamic exchange of technique, and then like one person gets a position and wins. But it's like if you're going to use a ton of strength to s- secure the victory, which I think is what's going to happen in a lot of these. If if he continues doing the challenge matches, a- at a certain point, someone who's a s- crazy psycho is going to grab Mikey's leg and just like drop their 220 pounds of juiced up muscle on it and just try and break his leg. Or break something on him, and it's not going to be a fun experience. I was a little bit worried when he had that match with Muhammad Ali, and they were they well, got Muhammad, well. That's the thing. Muhammad took it a technical approach. He yeah. didn't try and launch him around or right. do anything crazy, and like that was aw- he still won, which is aw- great. That was the way it should be done, but not everyone is going to do that, right? And I, I it depends well, on how bad you want to win. And there was no there was no money on the line for that match, right? That's true. Yeah. No so when there's ten thousand dollars on the line, maybe you're going to try a little harder, throw your weight around. Yeah, especially if Mikey beats a few guys in a row. <laughs> Because they didn't go super hard, things yeah. are going to change. The vibe, yeah. the feeling is going to change for the next guy that Mikey fights. So it's like on a lot, on like over time, it's going to be a less and less fun thing ordeal. to watch. Yeah, which is why I don't want to get involved. Well, shout out to Mikey Musumeci. I'm a fan. He's a good guy. Yes, he he's got a good heart. He's, he's fun to talk to. He's a nice. Yeah. It's like a really sweet guy. Like I wish him the best. It's like I don't think there's an angry, bitter bone in his body. Like. He's like would be the last person to like shit on someone else. I think ever. What happened to Tammy? What's Tammy up to? I don't know. She's busy with law school, huh? Yeah, and Mikey's in law school too, right? I don't know. I think he's start. I think the whole point of this is that he's focused on jujitsu now, and oh. that's why he's going to like see how far he can take it. Because now he's not worried about school, and he's just focused. on I mean, training. it makes sense. Like, I, I why be a lawyer when you can kill it in the jiu-jitsu world like obviously there's plenty of lawyers there's not very many clearly you love jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu so guys. why wouldn't you just continue loving jiu-jitsu and do it well like, i think the only reason like everyone loves jiu-jitsu more than normal work usually the only reason they do normal work too is as like a safety net to insure, insure their future but i mean at, at this point you don't have like why? why like you can still if you're interested in it just study it on your own don't go to school and have some sort of time requirement would, would you be a little disappointed if mikey became a lawyer and stopped doing jiu-jitsu yeah would you be, be like, what the fuck? Anyone can like, be a lawyer, why, why? and and lawyers' jobs are probably going to get automated eventually. Anyway, Le- legal zooms like, taken over. Like, who cares? Like, just focus on like the cool shit. Actually, lawyer is on the top ten list of jobs to disappear. With yeah, I mean, uh, it's just a book of rules, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> if you just follow the rules and make sure that like you'll pl- so can somehow input the situation into the rule book through some sort would of you, automated. Would you let a computer program defend you in a criminal case if it does a better job <laughs> than a human? Hell yeah. But what if you don't know? You get to choose, but you're not sure what we'll do. I'm sure there's job. like a stat. Like it's not going to be actually functional until it's like that lawyer is 99% effective at following the law. 
But well, that's the thing. It's like some lawyers bend the law a little bit. Are they well, like? Yeah, that's the point. It's like you have to, yeah. you have to, you have to, you have a strategy, right? You have to. Oh, I'm not going to get into it. I don't more more that. interesting than lawyer uh, AI is jujitsu AI. Like when we, if you can create like a robotic body that's is now being artificial, has an artificial intelligence implanted into its core, and that artificial intelligence has spent eons what's the of training versus another human body what's the name of the ai that beat the the grandmaster in chess deep mind deep mind and what's or the deep blue uh there's no, a few no, no i think you're, there's, there's a bunch there's of iterations two. yeah there's two that are like the shit well the the way that one it, is deep mind the way that it works the way that the, the big uh um resurgence of uh, machine learning is its ability to do self-play so it plays itself through right. an, like a ridiculous amount of iterations of the game, right. and it gets so good versus itself. Then it's like versus a human is like Just no deal. It's seen every possible outcome that can happen in a what game. What was the other game that they played? It wasn't chess. It was Go. Go. Yeah, which is much more um, complex more as far complex. as like there's more uh, options in it's the like, game. It's like four D chess. There's like a lot going five, on. Five D chess. And like jujitsu is probably even more deep than that. I would say there's probably so, all sorts of crazy movements that have never even been displayed or anyone's even found themselves in but a computer is not limited by reality and, and the speed at which it compu computes the options from each position is so far advanced the whole point of the, what's so scary about artificial intelligence is it could just simulate everything in a very short amount of time and then just like apply that knowledge to a real situation when i was driving around new zealand i listened to this uh this gre episode um i'm gonna get onto it real quick it's uh, if you want to learn about AI, listen to Lex ah, Friedman's that was it. podcast. I was going to get his last Le name. Lex, Lex Friedman. Lex Friedman, yeah. He's, and he's a black belt. And he, he's from Boston. He interviews a lot of uh, really cool people. Yeah, he's super show. cool. Yeah. And yeah. He, his, the focus of it is on AI. And you can get a, a, a better understanding of what is actually going on and why AI is a hot topic. Actually, if Lex listens to this podcast, give us a ring, Lex, and maybe we can have well, you Well, we could guest. like ask him about jujitsu AI. Well, he's a professional podcaster now. He quit his job, right? You, yeah, you listened to that know. last episode? Yeah, I don't think he quit. I think he still is involved in his work at MIT. Okay. But I think he gave up his full-time faculty position because he wants to pursue podcasting. I don't know. Which I think was a great idea. He said that on GRE. So if Lex would like to be a guest on our podcast, give us a shout. That'd be cool. Maybe I'll just him some I'll shoot him a message. It was a really cool episode. Anyways. You actually used to train by by me in Maryland. You, I think he was training in Washington. Or Washington he lives or in Boston, right? That's where MIT is? Yeah. I think he messaged me one time in the past back when like way before when back when I was like a purple belt or something I think he he knew about my jujitsu but I didn't respond because I didn't know who he was <laughs> either um so coming up in the near future is grapple fest eight. Oh, and actually, isn't coming soon is the the SUG submission underground it's coming back Craig Jones and Nikki Rod are fighting kyle boehm and that's oh, a team Vinny. match tag team Mud kyle wrestling. boehm and Vinny are a team Vinny? yeah versus craig and nikki rod uh kale just texted me about it today that's a lot of meat i think it was kale you mean chael Ch what I, how do you, chael sorry <laughs> kale sanderson <laughs> message me. chael kale chael so sorry. anyways um adam varginsky versus john blank what do you think Keenan, hello. I'm Keenus. Uh, it's today, 6 p.m. Keenus. What's well, happening right now? <laughs> There's no point in shouting it out. Grapple Fest? <laughs> it's no, the, the Submission Underground. It's on UFC Fight Pass right oh, now. Okay. I thought it was like in the future. It's happening now. He said to tweet it out, but I don't have a Twitter. Next week is Grapple Fest. Adam Farjinski versus John Blank. Adam's cool. I like his game. It's very unique. After fighting him, I realized that it's like he's not, he is using his own movements. Yeah, he's good. Which is rare. I felt He's it like myself. creating his own movements and like making them work because that's, that's super cool. What do you think? Uh, I'm going to give it to Adam. Going to Adam? I think Adam is just like a, tech, a technician. Actually, the, the funny thing about this match is I fought these guys back to back at ADCC. Adam. Oh, yeah. Uh, not back to back. I'm sorry. Menteus was in the middle of them, but I thought I fought them both at ADCC. You should ref the match then. Um, that's a great idea, except that I don't want to ever referee ever again. Shout out to the referees. It's a tough job. I don't want to do it. So I'm glad you guys do it. Um, I don't know who to go with. I, th I think you can never count out John Blank because if he gets your leg, you're in trouble. 
And Adam does have long legs. There's a lot to grab onto. Um, but the question, I guess, is it uh, is it sub only? No. What is Grapple Fest? Is there points? There's points. I'm okay. not up to date on all the events. There's so many. I know. Okay, well, Tyrus Holo versus Dante Leon. I, gotta, I think Ty wins. That. I got to go with my boy Ty. Yeah, I trained I, into men. Bro. I trained with him uh, yesterday or two days ago. Uh, he's a fucking savage. Like it's so hard to hold on to him, and he's so gangly, and his cardio is just endless, endless. Yeah, I haven't trained with him in a while. I would like to again. Endless cardio, and then uh, Cade versus uh, Ash Williams. I don't know anything about Ash. Is it Ash? Ashley. Yeah. Ashley Williams is a British noogie grappler with very sharp submission hunting style game, according to Flow Grappling. Hmm. Obviously, we got to go with Cade because yeah. we don't know anything about Ash, and he's our and he's our boy. Those two kids are really good. They're actually they're Teenagers. amazing. Teen, yeah, they're teens now. They're almost adults. The IBJJF changed the. Uh, I think the only interesting match is to put uh, Ty versus Nikki Ryan. Yeah, it was Kate, it one. was Cade that had the match of the trials on. Yeah, and Ty versus Nikki Ryan is the one to have to happen. That's the that's the match that is challenging for both of them. I think putting them like continuing to put them against people that are like not as good, like they're just not as. T- I mean, Dante is really good. Like Dante is a tough match for Ty for sure. Yeah, he's no gear world champion. Yeah, Dante. That's a, that's a different one. But if, uh, some of his other matches recently, it's kind of like what? Come on. Well, Wagner. That was a tough one, right? Didn't he fight Wagner? Who's fighting Vag? Perez is fighting Wagner. Oh, grapple dude, Perez. <laughs> I saw Perez the other day, and I, I, <laughs> did you hear? Him? I, I was, was there. You were there. <laughs> <laughs> he got the, he, he called me out on saying I talk shit about him or something. Mike or like, Perez. I, the word is the words he used was like, "I don't appreciate it, bro." Yeah, but I don't remember <laughs> saying anything bad. It was a classic Mike Perez phrase. Yeah, I just want to let you know I don't appreciate it. I would I say, but you didn't talk shit. What did we mean, say? What did. was it that you said? Oh, that he wasn't going to get the invite to ADCC from his last performance. What was it? What was the performance we were, he was talking about? Well, he lost to Adam Varginsky, ref decision in overtime, and then you stated that you're like, oh yeah, Michael probably have to go win the trials again. Like he probably won't get another invitation. Oh, I, I, yeah, know. he got he got some invites. Well, he's like, he's had two invitations. In no, yeah, has he medaled? He did. He won the West Coast Trials when he beat Gordon. Okay. Ah, uh, East Coast Trials. No, but medaled at at ADCC. No. I feel like ADCC, I mean, I don't have anything to do with that organization, but I think it'd be good to like bring back the guys who meddled mostly. Like, I, make I sure was, they all get I was told back. all podium placers get automatic invitations. Oh, okay. And then there's more, yeah. So they promised me an invitation. I mean, my, my, Mike is a great grappler, super technical, but I don't think he really like cares about the training that much to like really fulfill his potential because he's super talented. Yeah. You think he's a, you think he's a representat- representation of someone who is talented but doesn't work hard? As opposed to, you know, think, you know the saying. First of all, I am one of those people. I'll say that right away, right now. I don't work as hard as some people could, I mean, specifically in training sometimes. But maybe that's like I'm. I think Mike does a lot of it. training on his own outside. I don't. I, I don't know what he does. I think he loves. I, I, I can't speak on it. I, I don't know. You just don't want to make him mad again. Not, not that. I just really don't know. I don't want to speak on something I don't fully understand. I haven't been there in so long. I don't know what he's doing. But I know in the past he's d- demonstrated those traits. We all have at some some point. But Mike Perez is one of the few, like, he's one of the jiu-jitsu minds that it's like if he looks at a situation, watches it, he can, like, analyze it at a glance. He can be like, I I, I understand what happened there in that jiu-jitsu situation. I can replicate it and then, like, expand upon it technically. Like, he can add things from a creative standpoint, which I think is rare. And probably one of his biggest assets. That's a good thing. For sure. Well, I think he's facing Wagner at the Grapple Fest. Who do you got? I think Mike can Mike can win that for sure. Um, that's a that's a, a statement that no one can disagree with because yes, he can win. Yes, that's why I said everybody it. Can, <laughs> everybody can win. That's a very neutral statement. We don't. I won't. I won't. Pass. I would want Mike to win that match. You would want Mike yeah. to win, okay? Because he's your boy. We used to be more boys. But you guys go way back. Yeah, we've been around. Yeah, we've been around each other for a long time. He's like an, an annoying little brother. I would say. <laughs> I would like smack well, upside the back. You're gonna of hear head. it from him after that one. If I if, if I could smack him upside the back <laughs> of the head with no repercussions, I'd do it. <laughs> you gonna do pants? Yeah. Heavyweight? Yeah, probably. You can't make that middle middle head medium heavy no more. 
No. You're a chubby boy now. You got a dad. No, I'm in good shape right now. You got a dad bod. Dude, I got hardcore abs right now. I've been training so Let's much. see it. I'm not pulling them out on camera. Come on, you did earlier. Yeah, it was before the cameras were on. To show you, to show you what I shaved with the man's kid. Hey. Boom. You didn't get it. Oh. Um, no, I've been training a lot. Philippe Andrew came out to train with me for a little bit. After the match at Europeans. Yeah. He came by. Did yeah. he come by on his own or did you invite him? Uh, it was through a mutual friend. I, I'd been talking about like trying to get some guys out to come train and then a, uh, my friend Julian um, talked to him, I think. Does he live in Las Vegas or does he live yeah. in Brazil? Yeah, he, tra- he, he trains at uh, Drysdale's. Zenith in, in, in Vegas. Yeah. yeah, he was out here for a week. We had some awesome training and then he um, he went and t- he, he took my place because my knee is a little injured right now. I couldn't compete in the uh, um, the event. Uh, but he went and footlocked Patrick Gaudio. At which event? It's the Substars. Oh, yeah. Substars event. Patrick Gaudio, like, almost had him in an arm lock, and Philippe, like, defended the arm lock and, like, spun out of it immediately into a leg lock and secured the leg lock and then did his signature leg lock. Very dangerous. I think I think He's Philippe the rank number one. I think, yeah, I think he's underrated for how good he is. Yeah. You know, he's, he was the one that, that messed up Pena's foot at Worlds. He's, like, he's one of those guys that's better in competition. Like he he can perform when the lights are on. Yeah, he can perform. And I think no one really knows who he is because he doesn't run his mouth very much. He doesn't talk. He's a yeah. quiet, he's a quiet guy. Quiet and shy, I would say. Yeah. Borderline shy. Maybe it's just like a language barrier, but it seems like maybe he's a little shy. But he's very very talented. He taught a class here. People liked it. How was it? Foot, foot lock? Uh, I don't. I think he showed the triangle. I wasn't here. Mm. He was covering for me because I had to go do something. Nice. But he's super good. Um, we got to wrap this up though. Yeah. Sure. I need to give a, a quick shout out to the Nogi All Stars camp that I'm participating in. It's March 24th to the 29th. Ninth. It's a uh, dude. Is that an iPhone 11? Yes. Why did you buy that? You. What's that? What? What's wrong with my iPhone 11? It's actually an 11 Pro Max Plus with Siri. It's pretty much the best phone ever. Because it had the different cameras. I wanted the different cameras. I think I think iPhone like I'm a big iPhone fanboy. I like or Apple, I should say. I like Apple products. Yeah, me too. I think a lot of what they're doing is good, Dude, but I face think face recognition is the shit. I think the I don't think that camera's that much better than this camera. I didn't. But it's a you. little bit better. Yeah, a little. For yeah. like no, and, and I knew that. We're going to buy a new $1000 for a little No, bit look at I had Come the on. iPhone X and then I went swimming in Mexico and I jumped off a cliff and you know the iPhones are they're water resistant, but they're not waterproof. It broke? But when you jump off the cliff into the water, the force of the water made its way inside the seal oh. and it, it had just a little tiny screen da- water damage on the screen and at the it wasn't t- sensitive to the touch so i couldn't actually touch anything on my screen so yeah i got the iphone 11 so a little pro tip about apple products that i only just realized and the reason it's like some some people walk around with, without their case on like absolute psychopaths you would think right but if you have apple care fixing a broken iphone is actually incredibly easy and cheap Apple Care, you pay like a ninety dollar deductible. No matter how much, how bad the damage is to your phone, they'll just like replace your Why phone. Why the fuck are you advertising Apple right now? Because it's such, it's so cool. Because like I, I, at first, I was like, didn't want to take my phone in the shower. <laughs> I, mean, I always thought it'd be such a good, like, so nice to like have your phone like listen to something in the shower, you know. But then, and I always was worried like it's resistant. But then I was like, wait, I have Apple Care. <laughs> If, it comes, okay. if something goes wrong, well, I can just get a new phone that, for 90 bucks. Is Apple bucks. sponsoring this episode? Because no. that's what it sounds like. But I, I'm all about promoting things that I believe in, like Tesla and Chance and your products. And I think it's I think Apple Care is really great for these devices because you can literally just treat it like just chuck it, just throw it, up, like throw it on the concrete. Yeah. Let's do it. Do it. I dare you. No, I just got it replaced because the other one was cracked. And I was like, damn it, I got, it cracked. And I didn't know how to deal with it. And then I, I, I saw that I went brought it there and they said that Apple Care covers it and they're just like oh yeah we don't replace the screen we just give you a whole new phone <laughs> I was like well great I'm not gonna like protect it so much anymore I can be a little more just beat the shit out a little of more it. frivolous with how I treat this delicate piece of glass it's just more a little rough and tumble now I feel better about just chucking it around so yeah I'm doing this Nogi All-Stars camp in South Florida it's actually hosted at Wagner's gym it's a four-day camp and I'm teaching uh, a seminar there and so is Wagner and Roberto Cyborg and John Callistein and Richie Martinez and Gilbert Burns and William Abreu and Corey Gillard who is actually the organizer so if you guys want to check that out it's March 24th to 29th and it's going to be awesome and Flow Grappling is going to be there also recording stuff it's going to be super cool check That's it out it's like a five, four day camp Nogi All Stars I haven't been 
doing many seminars or events like that because I've been so focused on teaching here. The good news is Chance, our incredibly talented filmographer, editor, producer of so many things, has been um, doing a great job of recording our the instructions, the instructions, the instructionals of the, the, the classes. classes. Yeah, but in a really interesting it's format. The class techniques. If you if you were a former member of Keen Online back in the the rough the rough days when it was just a few of us, we have a little bit more of a um, competent team right now. You should go check it out because the new structure of the videos is really sick. You can get a little preview on my YouTube channel, which you're probably watching this on right now. Is it um? It's on Keen Online. The, your, your classes mm-hmm. is that a separate service or is it part of Keenan Online? It's part of it because I found a way to make it like work together. It's like very it's a the the curriculum that I'm doing in the gym is designed in a way that it can be a curriculum on a website as well. So it's organized by position, submission, what or like whatever the course uh, methodology is. Like we were trying to cover like back control or something like that. I'll teach the course to the class. And then the course will be uploaded. Got it. So it's like all in one. And we do a lot of, there's a lot of really good like question and answer sessions that go on during the drilling portion, which no one else does, where we actually like walk around and fix people's issues with the technique um, on video. So people can like, if they, they'll probably run into similar problems to performing the technique. And we just fix a lot of common issues with each technique. It's pretty cool. Check it out. Also, I'm having a a white belt uh, promotion. Get, what is it, Chance? What's the white belt promotion? Get in there, Chance. It's the eight-week beginner course, which is starting its second one pretty soon. Um, it's for me. First one was a massive su- success. Success. Massive success. Success. Yeah. If you know any, if you uh, know anyone who lives in San Diego that hasn't tried jiu-jitsu yet and they want to try a really um, well put together white belt introductory course, they start with a group of other white belts who have never trained before. And we raise them up from their infantile jujitsu status until at the end of the eight week course, they graduate into the, the other white belt class. (laughs) Sweet. (laughs) Yeah. Check it out. Anything else? I do have one last service that I want to promote. Um, because you know how I was doing those training camps Mm -hmm. online. And, um, I found that the most valuable thing I could do for people was review their footage, their training footage. So, um, in between the camps, I can't do the camps all the time, right? It's only before major tournaments and I couldn't, um, I couldn't take too many people this time because I was in Australia, obviously. So I had had a very small group this time, but I think the most valuable thing I can do for anyone is video review. I have a fantastic tool for you to use for this. That'll really good. Make it easy for you. So if you guys are interested in, uh, some video review or it could be the competition footage, it could be training footage. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Um, if you're interested in having your your footage broken down into very minute little detailed segments, um, let me know. Shoot me shoot me an email. Um, I haven't I haven't put together a price sheet yet, but I'm going to do that this week. And um, yeah, you can just upload your videos to me, and I'll review them, and uh, I'll I'll lay overlay some commentary on top of the video and send it back to you. And yeah, we can go from there. Um, just uh, shoot me an email at. Hinger seminar. You almost said it yourself. You almost said Hinger. Yeah, I know. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Hinger <laughs> seminars <laughs> at gmail.com. Um, so, so, yeah, I would just look for like 10, 15 minute video clips that I can break down, analyze, and send back to you and give you some some feedback on, on your, your training session or, or your competitions. So, let's just like end the podcast with um, us preparing for the next podcast so the listeners know when to expect it. Are you leaving anytime soon? I only leave for the weekends. So uh, all my trips are short, Saturday, okay. Sunday. So, but are you here next weekend? No. What about the weekend after that? No. What about the weekend after that? <laughs> oh. No, no. So we'll, no podcast is no, in our we'll, future. No, no, no. We're going to do a weekday. Uh, we can do a weekday thing. But I, I'm gonna have, I have the Israel episode that I'm going to release okay. this week also, or later this week after we all release right. this. There episode. will be another podcast. Don't worry, guys. Some Sometimes you got to take a break. All right. We're not going anywhere. Maybe busy. maybe since you do a lot of podcasts alone, sometimes I can do a podcast alone. Do it, yeah. Bring on go, some guests. Go for it. I don't really, I, don't know, I just can't talk to anyone. No, but the reason the reason I want to do those when I'm traveling is so that we have something. You know, I don't want to just disappear for a month and then come back with nothing. For sure. Know? I had a, I got a few episodes while I was out there. I just couldn't couldn't get them edited and uploaded. Cool. But yeah, if we if we take a few weeks off, it's not a big deal. We'll be back. Like we just got no, some, no, some, no. I think we should push towards con- uh, a consistent. Of course, schedule. we're of gonna course. push towards it. It's just we're still in construction. 
of the things that we're trying to accomplish. Yeah. As far as like structure, organization, you know, logistics. You guys would be surprised at how chaotic our lives are. Yeah. It's it's a hustle, man. We hustle harder than anyone in the jiu jitsu it it, community. It, it is a hustle. We definitely hustle. All right. Let's wrap it up. Boom. Love you guys. Yep. Take and care. Hit us up on Instagram at uh, hey. Hinger BJJ. Hinger underscore or just Hinger BJJ? Just Hinger BJJ. Hinger BJJ, and I'm at Keenan Cornelius. Thanks, guys. See you later.